Marriage, the will of God on who you should marry. God loves family. A peaceful home is his wish and delight for every Christian home. He hates crisis at home or in the marriage. Perhaps that may be the reason he even guided our fathers in the past into making the right choices in their marriages, even when they do not follow his guidelines nor acknowledge him. As a matter of fact, the Bible stated clearly that crisis at home or in marriage hinder prayers from being answered. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 7 Reading from King James Version KJV Likewise, ye husbands, the way with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto weaker vessel, and as being heads together of the grace of God, that your prayers be not hindered. It therefore means that if you want God to answer your prayers, all things being equal, don't sustain crisis at your home. Give honor and understand each other, and treat each other with respect and decorum. Be gender sensitive and emotional intelligent. This will take learning and mental development. Otherwise, you risk your prayers not being answered. And to cope crisis at home or in marriage, there are certain actions you must take, and they have been instructed by God. One is that you must seek the will of God in choosing or making the choice of who to marry. So that even if at any time challenges come, you can boldly go to God for solution. Because your marriage was constituted according to His will, following His guidelines and directives. God's will is always the best for us, and it is always meant to make us and not to mar us. It always proves to be the best for us. We can see this in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. Reading from King James Version, KJV, God says, For I know the thought I think towards you, said the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. God wants the best for us in all things, including in our marriages. Everything that the Lord does is good and for the profiting of his children. But like the scripture says in Proverbs chapter 25 verse 2, Reading from King James Version, KJV. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. So many times, God will want us to come to Him for guidance on how we can access the blessings. Already He had put them down in place for us. The reason has been God wants a relationship with us and not just religion. God equally wants the best for us in our marriages, and that is why He laid down principles that must be followed if we need the best He has for us. These principles and guidelines are to enable us to discover and search out the life partner He has ordained for us and then come to Him for confirmation and blessings, just like our earthly parents we do. Our earthly parent actions in our marriages are just the adumbration of what should have transpired in the spiritual realm if the will of God is followed. Incidentally, are you new here, consider subscribing so that you won't miss other interesting videos just like this. Alright. God has ordained a life partner for all of his desiring creations. He created everything in twins, including us. In the book of Isaiah chapter 34 verse 16, Reading from the New International Version NIV Look in the scroll of the Lord and read. None of this will be missing. No one will like her mate, for it is his mouth that has given the order, and his spirit will gather them together. This is to say that God has made us each with our mates, and has given us the duties of finding them. But you may never be able to correctly find your mate to be if you don't involve God. And when God is not in a family, a crisis may be unavoidable. So for those desiring a lovely home and a happy and joyful relationship, it must take you, among other things, to follow God's guidelines and procedures, to discover, locate, or search out your marriage mate or partner. He provided us with guidelines and procedures 
for tracing or discovering our mate or partner because he understands what will be the ugly and unpalatable consequences of a wrong choice of marriage partner. This was the aftermath of the fall of man. Until then, God brings wife directly and gives to man. But when a man Adam felt, it seems he blamed it on God's direct giving him a wife. He told God, it is the woman you gave me, perhaps implying that it is because God gives him a wife. We can see this in Genesis chapter 3 verses 9 to 12. Reading from King James Version KJV. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and hid myself. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Against this backdrop, it seems God now chooses to allow man to henceforth find for himself a wife. We can deduce this from this scripture. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 22 Reading from King James Version KJV Whosoever founded the wife founded a good thing and obtained favor of the Lord. By implication here, God wants us to find a wife ourselves. Although he had made one kept and awaiting our finding, but we have to find. However, knowing that we are susceptible to wrongful choices due to our fallen nature and limitations in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, he gives us guidelines and procedures for finding who he has made for us. And here are the guidelines and procedures. Number one, he or she must be a person of the same faith. Before any man or woman qualifies for your consideration for marriage, you must be of the same faith. The Bible explicitly forbids cross-religious marriage or marriage between persons who do not serve the same God. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 3 to 4, reading from King James Version KJV, the Bible says, Neither shall thou make marriages with them, thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter thou shalt take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. And in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 to 18, reading from King James Version KJV, it says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship had righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion had light with darkness? And what concord had Christ with Belial? Or what part had he that believed with an infidel? And what agreement had the temple of God with idol? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughter, said the Lord Almighty. Though this directive or instruction does not apply to marriages contracted at the time of ignorance, that is before conversion or repentance because as the principle of God is, he overlooked acts or actions taken in ignorance. In the book of Acts chapter 17 verse 30, reading from the New King James Version and KJV, Truly, this time of ignorance God overlooked, but now command all men everywhere to repent. So in regard to marriages entered in ignorance or before conversion or repentance, Though God might have graciously led them because of his abundant grace and mercy. The scriptures have this to say. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verses 12 to 16, reading from King James Version KJV, 
but to the rest speak I, not the Lord. If any brother had a wife that believed not, and she pleased to dwell with him, let him not put her away. And the woman which had husband that believed not, and if he be pleased to dwell with her, let her not leave him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, as we are your children unclean, but now are they holy. But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases, but God had called us to peace. For what knowest thou, O wife, whether thou shalt save thy husband? Or how knowest thou, O man, whether thou shalt save thy wife? So number one will of God for you is that the person you find must be a person of same faith as you. If he or she is of a different faith from you, then he or she is never the will of God for you. Number two, there must be peace of mind when you find him or her. Anything that is the will of God for you is always accompanied by the peace of God. We can see this in Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11, reading from King James Version KJV. For I know the thought that I think towards you, said the Lord, thought of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. If the relationship is devoid of peace and your mind is troubled and not at peace about it, it is time you quit it, for it is not the will of God. Number three, he or she must satisfy some of your desires and aspirations for marriage. That is why as you pray for God to lead you, you also watch or look out and be sensitive to who possesses the virtues that you admire value and desire in a partner for marriage. That is why the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18, reading from King James Version KJV, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So prayer does not forbid looking or watching out for your desires. This is because God cares and respects our desires and aspirations. He says in the book of Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 9, reading from King James Version KJV, Nevertheless, we made our prayer unto our God, and set a watch against them day and night because of them. Number 4. There must be mutual love. While your love is expected to grow, there must be an initial love. Do not marry him or her out of pity or sympathy. No, it should be for love. Marriage should be between lovers and friends, because it is your love for each other combined with the wisdom of God that will keep your marriage from a crisis. Let us pray. Everlasting Father, guide our listeners to locate the love of their life the bone of their bone and flesh of their flesh. Also, Father, those who are already married have peace in their marriages. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching our videos. We'd like to give you another interesting video to enjoy next. But before then, if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe so that you won't miss other interesting videos just like this. Look at your screen now to see a video handpicked for you to enjoy next. God bless you.